So um, I usually go to bar charts, or you can find commitment of traders report on uh, many many different sites. Uh, right now, the commercial traders are extremely uh, short, or uh, like they haven't been in like two or three years, and the trend followers or smaller traders are very very long, and um, this is usually it leads to corrections. And uh, right now, the geopolitical tensions, I think we're still fine. We're still okay. So GLD, I love the chart because it goes up, then it consolidates. It goes up, then it consolidates. Right. It doesn't even correct. It doesn't do this. It's, it's, yeah. it's a pure technical, um, awesome, for lack of a better word, uptrend. Right. So nothing wrong with that. But if you read my newsletter, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, it was a week ago, I suggested writing calls against the position. So I'm still long gold. I'm still a GLD. I'm still long GDX as a combination of, uh, of gold stocks. Dennis, how are you? Good. Nice to see you, Andy. It's really good to see you. We've had a lot of movement in all different markets here. Wanted to get your opinion. Let's first uh, start with the stock market. When we've been saying for a while, if we don't get a correction in October or before or around October, we could see this thing running a great deal to the end of the year. What are the technicals uh, telling you? Well, um, I think we are going to have a correction. Um, I was kind of going back and forth on it since uh, the market was anticipating the Fed cut. They got it, and it's a jumbo cut. Everything is great. We made new highs. Uh, S&P did. Dow did. Uh, everything was okay. Uh, as far as internals, they were strong. Uh, so broad participation. I had no problems with it. And we kind of stalled about a week and a half ago. But what caught my eyes is something that rarely happens is VIX. So VIX is an indicator I look at, you know, my company VIX change. So it's it's obvious. While the market was sitting on, at the top, the VIX went straight up. This is very unusual. Uh, you know that uh, VIX and S&P have a negative correlation of about 72% historically, which is natural. Uh, when it happens for a day or two, when they go in the same direction, it usually means, okay, this direction is over. There's been, that is, has been going on for almost two weeks. Um, let me show you the chart. Let's see if, if, if it can work. I'm going to try to share the screen. So, oh, I'm sorry, this is the wrong chart. But, and uh, if you take a look at the last uh, several days, two weeks, we're basically sitting on top of uh, all-time highs. So today we sold off about 1%, but it's not much. So it's, it's sitting on top. So we're sitting right there, the previous stop in July, uh, previous stops in uh, August, early September. Right now we're at the same price. So this is a support, okay? I wouldn't worry about if it wasn't for VIX. Now let's take a look at VIX. So it's going straight up. Like look at this, the last five, six days. It went from 15 to 23. I mean, what is going on? The real volatility, uh, historical volatility is um, at about uh, 13, 12, 13. VIX is at 23. Uh, so the options traders are saying uh, we're going to have a correction. So at least a pullback. That's what the options traders are thinking. Yeah, and they're a pretty smart crowd. It's not just VIX. VIX futures, of the tracks VIX futures, uh, also went up. Look at that. It rarely goes up. So this, this is a concern, and I was buying puts today. You were so. buying puts. November puts, yeah. Um, wow. as a, uh, some of it uh, depends on your style of trading. Some of it is a hedge uh, to the portfolio, or uh, in my case, it's more of a, a speculative trade. It's not a big position, but I do think, let's go to S S SPY again, go down to a 50-day moving average, but that's, um, that's about a couple of percent. 
So mm-hmm. and if something goes wrong, then we're gonna go all the way down to 200 day. We haven't visited it in a while. Uh, and we're in October, and we all know what October means. <laughs> it's a lot of emotional trading. Yeah, uh, a, lot, a lot of weird stuff. We got things in Israel that is uh, unraveling in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, we have elections, but it, you know these are normal elections. I don't see any problems with it. It's not like market hates one side and likes the other side. It's just the uncertainty. Uh, we got those hurricanes, uh, especially one that coming. I know we. we your neck of the yeah. woods, not, not too far away. Yeah. Um, um, economically, everything is okay. So I don't see any problems. I mean, I, I mean we had uh, reports, some of them are slight, slightly inflationary. Others are saying that everything is okay. We're slowing down. The economy has slowed down a little bit. Mm-hmm. So it's not the economic trends. I think it's more geopolitical or election-wise or something like that. But VIX going straight up, this is not this is not a good sign. This is, um, uh, I mean, it's a high probability of a correction in the stock market. Interesting. Yeah, at, at least a pullback. That's that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Got it. Well, hey, let's talk about real quick before we get into oil, which is broken out. But let's talk about VIX exchange the new product that you've launched. Talk about that real quick, and then let's talk about oil. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's a new product. It's a newsletter that a lot of people ask me to do. Um, basically, uh, I'm going to update the market, uh, trade recommendations a couple, of, uh, a couple of times a week. Started it about two, three weeks ago. Had already several recommendations. They're mostly options, because I'm an options trader. Um, they could be as straight up as, hey, let's buy calls, you know, let's buy puts or, or call spread, pull spread, put spread. And some of them are going to be more complex, uh, more market neutral when you do spreads on one security versus a call or a put on another security. Uh, a lot of market neutrality that would I, uh, I have a lot of expertise on. And uh, I think it's an interesting product and people who are interested um, uh, should try it. And it's free um I, you read a couple of my reports so if yeah. you think you're up to par you know, thanks for mentioning it appreciate it yeah I, absolutely so um and where can people get it what's the website uh it's a vixchange.com vixchange like exchange but you know it's a wordplay vixchange.com v-i-x change.com yes that's correct uh, and you can also get it on naturalresourcestocks.net not that exactly. It's also there. <laughs> Excellent. So if uh, let's talk about oil here. We had um, a huge breakout, I think. Well, th- I don't want to speak for you. Tell me what the technicals are showing on oil and if you think this is geopolitical or if this is a, uh, a technical breakout or a little bit of both. It's a little bit of both. It's obviously it started with geopolitical. Uh, it's, uh, um, you know, Iran is involved and the <laughs> Middle East is involved. And um, if the United States gets involved heavier and this and that, it, oh my God, I mean, we can easily go to 100. So it started as that. That's the main concern. But technically, it looks fine. It just went straight up over the several days. By the way, talking about my newsletter, we caught it. We got, uh, you read about it. So we're already out <laughs> because it was kind of a short term trade, but we are we caught the oil up. trade. I got the oil, oil trade got out uh, the, uh, Friday. So, and it took basically what we held it for like a week and a half. And uh, yeah, got that trade. And actually, I would like to see right now because uh, uh, oil went straight up. I don't want to open the position, not a position right now. But what it did, it um, lifted all the oil stocks with it. And that's, I like them even more than the commodity. I, every time we talk, I like them more because they're cheap. And let me show you a couple of charts. I'll share the screen one more time. There you go. Um, Occidental Petroleum. It's been kind of in a doghouse. See, it was a, like a, you know, correction, bear market, call it whatever. Uh, and we're looking at a double bottom, mm-hmm. you know, one, um, both in September. Look at the RSI indicator, it's a divergence. Look at MACD, it's a divergence. Just basic indicators. So it cleared 50-day moving average. I, I believe it started the uptrend. Look at the volume on the upside. Look at this. 
uh, the red dark, uh, uh, bars. So this is pretty impressive. This is real buying. This is not mm -hmm. just short covering. This is real, real buying is going to continue. Um, uh, the blue line on the very bottom, it's implied volatility. Look how high it is. So I would say as a stock trader, I would just buy the stock for like an intermediate term trade. As an option trader, what I would like to do is take advantage of this high volatility. And I would like to sell naked puts on it. Like for example, a 55 or 54 put, maybe October, uh, 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 November expiration. I would agree with that. Because yeah. Because the volatility is so high, correct? Yeah, it's expensive. So as you and I always talk, selling naked puts is a bad idea if you don't want to own the underlying. But in this case, I do. I would like it to put back to me. So I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm going to sell those fat puts on, uh, on probably November expiration. I haven't done it yet. I will do it tomorrow, especially if, if it pulls back. So like a little down tick here and there. So that would be good. If, the, if it goes up, puts expire worthless, I get the... If it doesn't, as we talked about multiple times, it's going to be put to me at that price, at the strike price, and I would like to own it because I believe the, the future is bright for this company. Almost the same, almost I Look at that double bottom. Yep. Divergence RSI, divergence MACD, very high implied vol, almost at the high uh, of the year. If it's yeah, very close to that. Similar chart, similar thing. The first target is 200-day moving average, so that's about 10% from here. Uh, or I believe that it's starting in more of a major uptrend. So um, I, it's a, it, these two stocks are very good, very good stocks to own. So I I like them a lot, and uh, I'm going to write puts on them. Excellent. Okay, real quick, if the general stock market falls apart as you think it will, or it has a correction as you think it will. Will mm -hmm. it suck down the oil? These oil equities could be, could be, but it, I I think they're gonna hold uh, a lot better. Yeah. Um and that's why you sell puts too because you want to put to you. You're just collecting the premium. Collecting the premium, yeah, and it's fine. I'm I'm sure if the market goes down five or ten percent, if it's a big if again, if it does, then those stocks will correct a little. But considering what's going on in the world, I think. Crude oil will stay buying. I think it's going to still go up. Uh, here is a chart of crude oil. I don't have to show. So uh, just a, a ETF. ETF. Look at that. That just ran like a bat out of hell. Yeah, that's awesome. So I think the the uh, major target is those two tops we had earlier this year. One in April. One in uh, one was that in July. So mm -hmm. that's another that's another three or four percent. But and if hell breaks loose, yeah, hell hell breaks loose in the Middle East is going a lot on that. Yeah, and so, your, your newsletter you started nibbling on it around seventy. Is that correct? Yeah, we bought um, bought it around sixty nine. So we almost caught it. Really it was like yeah, six yeah sixty nine seventy something like that, and uh, we got out like uh, around seventy six seventy seven. So good for you. Okay, yeah, let's talk about gold. Gold's been the headlines. Gold's been so strong. It seems like um, it's going uh, sideways um, a little bit recently. Uh, silver has had a really good run as well. Comment on both uh, gold and silver. What are your thoughts? Uh, as far as gold is concerned, um, you know, I'm a fundamentally bullish gold. I don't see any problems with it. It's not for inflationary reasons. It's just for many, many reasons. Uh that the governments are buying it and uh, the ge geopolitical tensions, uh, their uncertainty about the Fed and so on and so forth. So I'm not gonna repeat what other guests, uh, you guys uh, uh, mentioned. Um, so fundamentally I'm bullish. Technically, the only concern I have, and this is more of a short term concern, maybe for a month or two, is commitment of traders report. And uh, let me see if I can find that chart right now and share the screen. That's a big if. You share the same thoughts really as myself and a lot of other traders is. Mm -hmm. um, it's just really, really a one-sided trade right now, which is concerning. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't have this chart at the moment, but it's okay. So um, I usually go to bar charts, or you can find commitment of traders report on uh, many many different sites. 
Uh, right now, the commercial traders are extremely uh, short, or uh, like they haven't been in like two or three years. And the trend followers or smaller traders are very, very long. And um, this is usually, it leads to corrections. And uh, right now, with geopolitical tensions, I think we're still fine. We're still okay. So GLD, I love the chart because it goes up, then it consolidates. It goes up, then it consolidates. Right. It doesn't even correct. It doesn't do this. It's it's, yeah. it's a pure technical, um, awesome, for lack of a better word, uptrend. Right. So nothing wrong with that. But if you read my newsletter, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, it was a week ago, I suggested writing calls against the position. So I'm still long gold. I'm still a GLD. I'm still long GDX as a combination of, uh, of gold stocks. Nothing, <laughs> nothing wrong with it, except for the commitment of traders before. And that's why yeah. I said I'm, I'm going to write some covered calls. If it if it pulls back, correct, okay. At least it it'll mitigate my short term pullback losses. Yeah, that's the only thing. Longer term, everything is fine. I, I don't see anything. I don't I don't see why gold would collapse. I, I think yeah. it would just if if it pulls back a few percentage points. That's what kind of I'm expecting. Okay, fine, no worries. So that's why I wrote some calls. Yeah. Uh, silver is a little bit. Um, it has. Almost the same thing, but um, the uptrend in silver is not as impulsive. It's more like, um, which is fine, no worries. But if you look at the weekly chart, let's see if I can, let's see if I can share it. And by the way, commitment report, commitment of traders report on silver is as bad as gold. So again, the producers, the commercials, they're short. So they know more than we do. Uh, sometimes it just hedge, but for whatever reason, it's one of the, um, it's a canary in a coal mine, and that's why I'm thinking maybe silver. I like it a little bit less right now. Let's share the screen again and see if um, that's trading at prior highs, but what I would like to do is show you the longer term chart, the weekly chart that was daily. That's a weekly chart. So it's not a clear, clear uptrend. It's nice, but it's not good as gold. But look at MACD. Again, I'm looking at basics of basics. MACD has a little bit of a divergence, a little bit. So RSI is not as strong as it was when we were going up uh, a couple of months ago, two, three months ago. And uh, um, the volatility is starting to go up when it goes up. Uh, usually leads to change of trend or consolidations and things of that nature. And as I mentioned, commitment of traders are relatively bad. So silver, I don't have a position right now. In other right. words, I'd like to see uh, for fundamental reasons, um, I view silver just like I view gold. I, I hardly ever short it because I, I think that overall, we're talking months. You're crazy years, short it. Yeah, I, I think we're going to be higher, so I don't, I don't want to short it. But at the same time, I'm a little cautious on that right now, and therefore I have no positions in silver at all. If it pulls back, if it has a little bit of a correction, I'd be interested again. Got it. Okay. Um, what should uh, traders and investors keep a lookout for over the next week or two? A week or two, well, first of all, you know, the hurricanes and um, and the situation in Israel, um, obviously these two, and I'm expecting a correction in the stock market, some kind of pullback, some kind of correction, because VIX is saying we're going to have a couple of bad days, don't know when, uh, but that's what we should look at. I'm not, when I'm saying bearish in the stock market, I'm not saying bear market, I, you know, I don't think so, I don't think so, but some kind of a scare, a short-term scare this month maybe in the cards so got it okay again if people want to do business with you or um they like your work how do they find you again and how do they uh follow you on uh twitter uh it's uh, on, on twitter or x now uh at trader leontiev so it's pretty simple or they can go to vix change and um find the information there and uh i'm posting another uh newsletter today and I'm going to update a couple of things on either Tuesday night or Wednesday night. Excellent. Thanks, Dennis. And uh, I will link to everything in the show notes below this video. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Andy. Thank you, Dennis. Good to see you.